Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixafondue. In this video, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna talk about the PBR, or Physically Based Rendering Loader, that's in Moto 14 and up. And we're also gonna talk about a custom plugin for Kixel Bridge to export materials and meshes from Kixel Bridge into Moto. And we'll talk about how to install that. That actually works with the PBR loader that is in Moto 14 and up. So this you know, plugin from Kixel, or uh, for Kixel, will only work in Moto 14 and up. And so let's talk about the PBR loader first because we need that to be in working order before the bridge uh, plugin works. So we'll just go uh, PBR first and then move over to the bridge. So PBR, we all, I think, know what that means, physically based rendering. It's really just a set of you know standards or loose standards for shading. And it'll work with a variety of different materials and a variety of different renderers. What it is, is just a way of mapping material channels like roughness and normal and albedo or color to the correct channels in your rendering program. Whether you're using a real-time engine like Unreal or Unity or a Moto renderer or V-Ray or Octane or whatever. Programs like Substance and Kixel and a lot of uh, material libraries you find online conform to this PBR shading where they share a common set of sort of uh, suffixes to their file type. So a normal map will always have the word normal in it somewhere. And we're going to use the PBR loader to iterate through these directories, find the right maps for the right names, and map them to the right channels. That's essentially how it works. So if I look at something over here in Kixel Bridge, and I use um, Kixel more than Substance, so I'm going to use Kixel. Here we've got uh, these different materials, and you'll see there's a variety of different image maps associated with these materials. And this is what PBR shading is. We've got an albedo map for the color. It comes with an ambient inclusion map. You can use this for a variety of things. I tend to use it uh, for diffuse um, shading or diffuse amount in Modo. We have a displacement map. We've got a normal map. We've got a roughness map. And some of these have even more, like this one down here uh, has um, the albedo map and, and an AO map. It also has a cavity map. Also has a gloss map. Um, so there's a number of different maps or a specular map to so set the specular amount. So there's a number of different maps we need to be able to automate loading all these images in and setting, making sure we set the normal map to the normal channel in Moto's uh, shader tree. And that's what this does. So if we go back to Moto and over here on the shading tree tab or shading tab, this icon on the upper right here brings up our PBR loader. And we need to go to the preferences popover first if you haven't used this before to set up our definitions. And this is where we do the matching, where we match the suffix or the file name with the right uh, channel in Moto. If I go over here to bridge and I right click and say go to files, I've got uh, my explorer open here and I can see that these file names have um, you know different suffixes, cavity, I mean inclusion, normal, roughness. And you'll see that the prefix to the file name is sort of a, is a nonsense. It's just, it's used, it's whatever internal naming system Kixel uses. But the folder does have something human readable. It says sand debris. So that's going to be useful to us as well. So we know what we're loading into, uh, into Moto. So we want to map these things into Moto. So we want to make sure this roughness file goes to roughness. And the way we do that, do that is we just type in what this um, suffix is going to be and what it's going to be mapped to. And this common drop down here is just the common, it's just the typical physical material in Moto. So here's our Moto material. And if you look at the material, there's this drop down here. We've got physically based, principled, and a couple of older ones, traditional and energy conserving from early versions of Moto. Principled is supported. So if I go to principle, you'll see there's a metallic uh, value here, a metallic channel. And if I look at the principled, drop down here, we have a metallic channel. And so again, if you're familiar with this, this isn't really a tutorial on PBR shading, but being able to load up an image that defines what part of your model is a, a metallic material versus a non-metallic material, that's what that slot is for. We're just gonna deal with the common materials here, but it also supports Unreal Engine and Unity and uh, GLTF, which is the um, real-time version. Uh, it's sort of a web uh, GL sort of uh, a version. And we can get to our, you know, custom materials here. We've got Unity and, and Unreal if you tend to use those. So this is pretty robust and pretty useful. It, it covers a lot of stuff. And I'm not going to cover every single option on this, but we'll, we'll get, you know, cover enough so you can get this going. So diffuse color in Kixel, that's the albedo right here, albedo. So in Moto, what we want to do is just type in the word albedo here. And that's going to map, let's make sure you spell it right. That's going to map those albedo images when it scans that directory to diffuse color. Bump is just bump, and displacement is just displacement. Normal, normal, specular amount is just specular. Roughness is roughness. 
Now, um, if you're using V-Ray, it uses glossiness for roughness, so you may want to invert that. Uh, but we can talk about that a little, a little more about that later. Diffuse amount, I'm going to type in AO, but you know, there's other maps in there that are useful. Again, this has a cavity map, right? So it's just a black and white image. We've got a gloss map, and you know, there's other maps that may show up in from Substance or or Kixel that are useful to you, and you want to define those. So if I want to bring my cavity maps in, I go over here to additional definitions and click the little down arrow and click add. Now I've got a custom definition number 41 here is what it tells me. And I want to call the search string cavity. And let's set the RGBA to diffuse amount. That's what we want to set that to. And the color space I'm going to set to none. I'll get back to color space in just a second. And that's good enough here. I'll do one more. Um, Gloss. So let me add one for gloss. And if this is uh, uh, a reflection amount, often gloss is used for reflection amount. And so I'm going to go to gloss. Actually, it's used for, <laughs> depends on the render engine, right? So glossiness is often used in V-Ray uh, as, uh, as a roughness channel. It's actually the invert of roughness. This gloss one in Kixel, though, I believe is actually... Um, uh, such a reflection channel, but uh, you know what? Maybe it's the inverse of, of roughness. We'll just call it the inverse of roughness and similar to like what V-Ray does. And we'll just, so what we'll do is we'll set that to roughness. I'm not really sure what the gloss is out of Kixel, but we'll just, we'll just say it's the inverse of roughness. And so if we want a gloss, um, we're just going to bring it in as roughness, but we're going to invert it and we're going to set the color space to none. So it'll grab those two as well and set the correct um, uh, effect on those. Okay, so we've got those in, and we've got our names here that are mapping those images to the right channel. And let's look at color space. So if I go over here to System Preferences, and just down here at the bottom, we've got um, Color Management. And so Moto uses the Open Color I.O. Color Management. And these are just the default settings. And so what the default settings will do is they'll look at any 8-bit image or 16-bit image coming in to Moto, like a ping or a JPEG or a Targa, and it's gonna map that image to sRGB. And that's great if it's for reflection color or diffuse color or subsurface color. Uh, but if it's a um, information channel like bump or specular amount or roughness, you really wanna set that to none. And so we're gonna do this in our loader over here. For float images like HDR and EXR, it's gonna to default to linear. And so often displacements are in, in float. Uh, as well as images we use for lighting. So I'll just keep that. And so over here for normal, for sure, we want to make sure color space is none and not default. If it's default, it's going to give a gamma curve, an sRGB gamma curve to that normal map, and it's going to screw up your normals. It doesn't want that gamma curve. It just wants the straight data. Same with specular and roughness and diffuse. We just want none. Uh, displacement, I'm going to set to none as well because often there will be a JPEG or ping displacement, 8-bit displacement that comes with these types of files. So I'm going to set that to none because, again, we don't want default, which is going to sort of distort that, um, that displacement data and it's going to sort of artificially bump up the midtones of that. And, yeah, so that's good for those. Blend uh, modes we'll keep to normal and we'll just not invert any of these. So here we're good for the physically based material, right? Uh, there's some options up here. This drop down will create a physically based material in the folder. So we've got a folder, create folder checked. These are checked by default. You want to keep that checked. It's going to create a folder, and with use folder name, it's going to grab the name of this folder. So it's going to call that folder Sandy Debris, which is useful, much more useful than the prefix here, TD0, whatever the Kixel like internal naming scheming is is that they're using here is not very useful to us, but the folder name is useful to us and Moto will grab that. It will also create a texture locator, which we're gonna to have to adjust after we import this, but everything else is just you know pretty nice and, uh, and, and done here. So we've got all this set up and if you're using, for instance, a principled uh, a material, you wanna have this create a principled material, metallic or specular, rather than the physically based. Okay, so now that this is set up, I'm gonna go over here to this, um, I'm just gonna copy the uh, file path here of this material. I can click the load button here, or I could close this and click the load button here. And then I'm gonna paste that path back in there. And I just need to grab one of these. And it'll iterate through the rest of the directory. It'll grab all the other images and the definitions I've set up. It'll load them into the shader tree and it will set their um, effect to the correct effect. So I go over to the shader tree. And here we got it, right? And the name of the folder it brought in is the same as the name of the folder all the textures were in. So that's useful. 
and you know the albedo is set to diffuse color you know the gloss remember we set that up in uh, the additional definitions is set to roughness and it's inverted i'm actually not going to use that so i'll just delete it and everything is there and correct the only thing we really need to do is set uh, make sure our, our folder is pointing to something in the scene right now it's just covering up the whole scene right it's not set to any specific item it's not set to any specific polygon tag. So if I were to bring in like a, a cube, it's just gonna cover that as well. So I'm actually going to go to my item here. I'm gonna set it to the, uh, the sphere item, the first mesh item I've got here. Now, the next thing we need to do is just set our texture locator to the correct um, settings. And you'll notice that this only has one texture locator for all of these images. And this is a good thing because these images, they're all gonna be UV mapped or maybe you'll do a, a projection mapping or if Moto ever gets triplanar mapping, maybe we'll do triplanar. Um, but you, typically you're gonna want the scale or the UV repeats on all of these textures to be the same or all of these images to be the same because that's you know how they're set up. So go over to our texture locator. It defaults to like a solid projection type. Let's set this to UV. And I'm guessing they did solid because they, you know, they weren't sure what UV map you'd be using or the name of the UV map you'd be using on your models. And let's just set it to texture and then maybe uh, double the wraps here on all of these guys. And there we go, there we got it. And uh, easy enough. So, and you can load a lot of these in really quickly, right? I could just go over here and load PBR and I could just, you know, go over, grab another one. Let's grab uh, some weather. You know, this one only has a few different um, items in here. Roughness, normal, and albedo. Just pop that in the top so you can see it. And there's our, there's our weather texture. So, works super fast. I don't have to bring in these images one at a time. And it sets all the effects for me, which is, which is pretty great. And puts them in a folder, you know, that's readable to me. So, I'm going to delete both of these. And I'm going to use the Pixel Bridge Importer Exporter now to do basically the same thing. Except with that, I could also bring in geometry, which is pretty cool. So, if you go over to um, GitHub, and I'll put the link in the description below you'll be on this page and you'll see this little green button here with a code drop down. You want to download the zip and uh, that just contains um, all the data we need. Or that's the plugin essentially. There's also a little description here. I'm going to show you how to install it. Double click your zip and inside your zip you'll see this folder called Pixel Bridge. There's some other files in here as well. But this is the folder you want. This has the um, Moto configs and the index in here. That's the plugin. So you want to copy that and put that in your kits folder. If you don't know where that is, Moto will find it for you. You just go over here to, I can close my PBR here, go over to system and open my content folder. And I'll just open up your finder or file explorer. And here's my kits folder. So I want to copy this Kixel bridge, not all this other stuff and not, you know, the, uh, the parent folder. You just want the Kixel bridge folder. Just copy that and put that in your, in your kits folder right here, Kixel bridge. Really what you want to make sure is that this index config is just one directory down. You don't want multiple folders, um, this index directory and, and multiple folders below the one above it. So just one down. So I look at this you know, hatchet collection from uh, William Vaughn, the index config is just one folder down. So you know, Moto won't find it if it's multiple folders down. So if I put this you know, Moto Kixel bridge dash kit dash master folder in the kits folder, well, one folder down, there's no config, so it's not going to see it and it's not going to load it. That's why you just put this pixel bridge folder in there and just one folder down is, is, the, is the index config. It throws a lot of people off. Anyway, so back in Moto, you restart it if you hadn't or load it up. And over here in the kits uh, button, you'll see pixel bridge. You'll see a button for pixel bridge where you can start and stop the server. Now, it should start when you load Moto, so you shouldn't have to start it manually, but you can do that if you want to. And what that does, is it just opens up a data port for Moto or in Moto, ready to accept data from Kixel Bridge. And so there's just a couple settings in Kixel Bridge we have to do, and we'll be on our way. So over here in Kixel Bridge, let's pick a new uh, material. Let's maybe use like uh, this rusted metal here. And it's got all these maps. So again, Albedo, AO, Displacement, Normal, Roughness. These are all already set up in our PBR loader. So those definitions are already set up. And I can pick my resolution here. Over here on the, um, we've got a couple of settings here, asset info, download settings, and export settings. So in the export settings tab, we can pick our you know, resolution here and our file format. So I'll do ping in 2K. And under export two, um, it's probably defaulting to something like Unity or Unreal, probably Unreal actually since they bought them, it's probably defaulting to that. But what we want to do is, is pick the custom socket export. And there's a, a value here, 24981. That's the default value, I believe. 
But if not, just type that in and that's the number Moto has. So Moto is, is, is gonna send that to Moto. And then I can just say export and it'll put up a little uh, note here saying it's exporting it to the custom socket. And there's a little, uh, you know, progress bar down here showing the textures being exported and it'll give you an error if it doesn't work. And if it does work, it'll say it was exported successfully. So I go over to Moto and here we go. Here's my metal. It's just, it's just using the PBR loader to bring these things in and here they all are, which is great. So uh, we can also bring in geometry with the Kixel Bridge. So if I go back over to Kixel Bridge, all right, let's find a good 3D asset here in, uh, in Kixel Bridge. Let's see, 3D assets. Um, maybe I'll bring in like a, a decorative bowl. How about that? So over here in our export settings, we wanna do FBX for our mesh format. Uh, we'll just do 2K for the images, uh, image resolution again and ping files. We can choose a level of detail if we want. I'll just pick the highest one, which is zero. And then, yeah, we'll just hit export and it's going to give us our little message here. Down here, you'll see it's converting the textures to 2K. And then it pops up the FBX import dialog in Moto. I can just go with the defaults here, hit OK. And it brings in our wooden bowl and with the textures. Now, the one thing you'll have to do, again, is it's just, again, it's set to everything, right? So if I had another item in here, like this big sphere, it's just gonna pick up that texture. So I need to set this group folder to this item. So let's set it to the, uh, the wood bowl there. And then let's set our texture locator to UV. So here you'll see, again, it's just one texture locator for all the different um, images. And we'll set that from solid to UV map and pick uh, UV is the name of the UV map for these Kixel uh, FBX files. And there we go. So you have to do a couple clicks over here, but for the most part, it's just way faster than having to do it the old way. So again, pretty decent, uh, pretty sweet to have this um, Kixel bridge here. This was developed by Ben Halling, I think in his spare time, he's a coder over at Foundry. So big thanks to him. And uh, I don't know, I, don't, I guess I don't know the, the rules with GitHub, but it, this may, be uh, improvable by you know the community out there. I think that's the case with the GitHub, um, the the code there is that if anybody wants to improve upon this, maybe uh, pick a pick a UV map for us automatically. I think you might be able to do that. Yum yum.